Welcome to another Lights, Camera, McCarthy holiday special. I'm Steve Shenevy alongside the man himself, the one and only Kevin McCarthy. <laughs> Hi, Good Stephen. To see you, my friend. Stephen, how are so you? So over the next 30 minutes, my yeah. friend and I are going to talk about some of the big movies that are going to be coming out this summer, your summer blockbusters, both in theaters and also streaming. And Kevin's going to share some of his sit-downs with some of the stars as well. Dude. So let's start things off with something that's in theaters now. First of all, it's awesome to see you. It's fantastic, as yeah, always. I, I, I'm great to be here with you. We're coming off of a huge weekend for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This is the latest Indiana Jones film in the franchise, the final one, I believe. I mean, Harrison Ford is, well, like 80, 81 years old, and he's an incredible actor, but he's been playing this character for so long now, uh, since Raiders of the Lost Ark, and this is an iconic character for him to return to. And in this interview you're going to see, you're going to see him talk a lot about aging and how, as Harrison Ford, he's aged, but also Indiana Jones, the character, has aged as well. And this is now a, a, a new part of the franchise directed by a gentleman named James Mangold. So James Mangold directed films like 310 to Yuma. He did uh, Logan. He did Ford v. Ferrari. The first four Indiana Jones films were directed by a little-known filmmaker named Steven Spielberg. Heard of the guy. Yeah, and so Spielberg, uh, you know, the last one he did was The uh, the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which I didn't particularly love as an Indiana Jones film. I love the original trilogy so much, but this new one reminded me of the magic that Spielberg brought to the original trilogy, and it kind of brought me back to that feeling I had as a kid when I was watching Raiders and Temple of Doom and Last Crusade, which is my favorite one with Sean Connery. Uh, and now this one, I won't go into any spoilers, but it has a third act and an ending that were, that to me was so special for the character and the, and the arc, no pun intended, about what kind of he <laughs> went through over these years. And so sitting down with Indiana Jones himself, Mr. Harrison Ford, was an absolute honor. I've been in doing interviews for over 15 years, and there's certain ones that really hit you a little differently from an emotional perspective. You think about, you know, I've interviewed Harrison Ford multiple times in my career, but to talk to him specifically for an Indiana Jones film, like I'll interview him for something else, and I'll want to ask him about Indy or ask him about Han Solo. And this time you finally got your And chance. now you have the opportunity to just ask him anything you want about Indiana Jones. So here's my one-on-one -on -one conversation with the legendary Harrison Ford talking all about the latest Indiana Jones film. Take a look. Kevin McCarthy from Washington, D.C. Well, first of all, congratulations to you. Well, um, thank you. There's a line that I want to bring up to you. It's not the years, it's the mileage. Yes. And it's a great line from Raiders, and I wonder now, looking back at the scope of your career... It's a lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, it's a, but it is a great line, though. But well, I wonder, it's a good line, but it's a lie. But what does it mean to you, though? It is the years. That That's one of the things I wanted to, to bring to the audience, was to see this character at this age. Yeah. We've seen him start in his early 40s, and we've carried on with four films. Now we get a chance to see him in a condition at, at a stage of his life that we that is different to the to the to the what we've seen in the previous four films. Mm. I've always felt as we as we decided to do another film in the series that we were obliged to introduce more information about the character, something new about the character. Because I wanted this, this I mean, I wanted all films uh, that I do to be what we call character-driven, which means that we're not doing something for the sake of itself, but there is a reason for everything that we do in the movie. And it is to tell the story of the character in this space, in this particular space. But the character is really important. The character is what's changed here. The character has suffered uh, the life that he's lived. And we find him, we have a very interesting part at the beginning, when we, uh, the first 20 minutes of the film or so, I'm 40 years old. But it's a very interesting technology that they've used to create uh, the the visual of me being 40 years old. They have been able, because it's Lucasfilm and they have 40 years of film on me, they're able to go through all of that film with artificial intelligence. Oh, we got it there, AI. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and, and pick out just the right light, just the right angle, blah, blah, blah. But it's my face, it's not photoshopped or anything. That's my 40-year-old face. But a few times in my life. Seen things, things I can't explain. And I've come to believe it's not so much what you believe. It's how hard 
do you believe it? When we spoke for 1923, you told me a great story about how you brought your own hat to set and, and snuck it into the set for Taylor Sheridan, and you were able to actually wear your own hat. Right behind you is obviously one of the most iconic hats in movie history. But I want to talk to you about it from a character perspective, because I find Indy to be really fascinating, because his vulnerabilities really shine when he, like, figures out that Marion's still alive, or he goes, Dad, when you're tied to Sean Connery and Lost Crusade, Last Crusade. But character is a really interesting thing, and I want to know what the hat gave you when you first dealt with it in Raiders, and then trying it on Particularity. again. Particularity. Okay. Particularity. It was a particular hat, mm. combined with a particular jacket combined with a whip, combined with whatever else there, there was, uh, you know, to make, uh, to bring together uh, uh, aspects of personality which we can call a character. John Williams scores one of the greatest themes of all time. That's, the, that's the glue that holds everything together, that buoys everything up. Remember the first time you heard it and what it means to you now, all these years later, to hear it again, set to your performance? Yeah, I don't remember the first time I heard it, but I remember every damn time I do hear it. <laughs> the music follows me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> well, it's one of the greatest themes of all time. It Thank is. you for this time. Thank you. I appreciate you, and I also love you in Age of Adeline. I think it's one of your best <laughs> films that you've ever made, and I hope ah, you know sweet. that. Sweet. Thank you very much. All Congratulations right. to you. This has Thank been you. An honor. Appreciate it. Thank Kev, here's one of the cool things. You said you got emotional and took you back to being a kid yeah. watching all the Raiders movies. This franchise is old enough that, me too, I got yeah. to watch him as a kid. But here's the thing when you talk about that score, the first, I guess you could call it, job I ever had when we were in high school and we hosted a show on the local radio station, the soundtrack and the theme to our show was the Raiders theme. It's amazing. So that's where that takes me, was back to the earliest stage of my career that, that got me here through the same thing that got you here through Raiders of the Lost Ark. And, and that's the beauty movie. of cinema, the idea of like, that it's universal, it could be used, in the, and then now you have an emotional uh, memory of what that song means to yep. you outside of the film, Absolutely. which is really special. Let's move on to another summer blockbuster, and this one features a guy who uh, might still be doing stunts when he's 80 years old if <laughs> yeah. he goes at this pace. Yeah, Tom Cruise Cruise is incredible. I was lucky enough to travel to Rome, which is insane to even say that out loud, uh, for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. This is uh, uh, the new Mission Impossible film, as you might have guessed, and this is a huge uh, summer blockbuster film opening July 12th. Tom Cruise is returning as Ethan Hunt, and as you, do, as you know, he does his own stunts, and the stunts are absolutely crazy to watch because they're immersive and they're narratively driven. They're all part of the story, uh, but Tom Cruise and I nerded out uh, at the bottom of the Spanish steps in Rome, Italy, about one of the most insane stunts in the film where he rides a motorcycle off a cliff, and the answer alone is even as crazy as the stunt itself. Take a look. Listen to me. The world's coming after you. His fate is written. Shall we write yours, too? If anything happens to them, there's no place that I won't go to kill you. That is written. Congratulations to you, Thanks, by the way. We got the blue. We got the blue. Yeah, we got blue. I, how are you we got, doing? We got, the, uh, we got the Italian blue going. Yes, it's nice. Can I say, look where we are right now? I know. Please do, because it is magnificent. Look at this. I want to geek out with you, because when I finally saw the cliff jump, so I've been seeing all the footage. I watched the featurette, and I was blown away by it. But when I was watching it with the narrative aspect of it, my stomach turned. So if you don't mind, can you geek out with me about the setup and the execution of that moment? Because I, I love when you accelerate. You can hear the accelerating. Uh, it was, you know, listen, there was years of training, actually even before, because I've been skydiving for many years and riding motorcycles since I was a kid. And I wanted to do something like that and have it be part of that story. But yeah, the moment before I took off, it was, you know, I had to go into the bowl. I had to jump out of a helicopter and test the wind. So I had to jump out. When you see, there's a long version of the EPK, and you see me jumping out because I have to test the wind in there and open. It was a little tricky that day, actually, because you could even see when I opened, I turned into the mountain because just the air was, currents are a little off, and if you 
you open a parachute at a different angle, it's going to affect it. So there's a lot I was thinking about in terms of performance, the helicopter going across, the drone going across, making sure that I didn't hit the drone, the drone didn't hit me, that the helicopter didn't blow me off the ramp, that uh, once I did depart, that I had separation from that motorcycle. And also when you're skydiving or jumping or anything in any sport, gymnastics, anything, your body's going to go where you're, where you're looking. So I had to be very careful when I was departing not to look down at the motorcycle because I could have gone into a tumble. Because if you look down, you're gonna, you could get into a tumble. If that happened, that would have been very difficult to overcome in the few seconds that I had before impact. So then once I opened, I had to make sure that I didn't have my parachute hit the rock on the side of the bowl. So I had to really pay attention. I love how Tom Cruise was demonstrating himself rolling with his sunglasses. Yeah. <laughs> he was just using his sunglasses I to... I love how you went all the way to Rome to get him to tell you that great story. Though, I, it was totally worth it. Yeah, the movie opens on July 12th, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1. He has just done some incredible stunts over the years. Oh, go back and watch the original Missions films on like Mission 5, 6, 7, 3. And They're shout all out amazing. to all the stuntmen and women that do that stuff for every movie. Deserves an there, Oscar right? category. Yeah. We are just getting started. Coming up next, Kev's most anticipated movie of the year. You've been talking about this one for about three oh, years yeah. now. And a pop culture phenomenon both hitting the big screen on the same day. We're going to have that when we come right back.